are leftists simply too delicate for comedy? So Frank sent this to me and I thought, oh, this is this will be good to talk about. Not realizing I am the subject of this article. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And I was like, all right, how is this going to go? I've never heard of the Trill Mag. I don't know if this is left or right, what the bent is. I said, let's read. Okay, there's a picture of somebody with a mask that says transphobia is not a joke. So I'm like, uh, who knows? Uh, with jokes about transgender transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney, an NYC comedian sparked a debate about whether leftists are compatible with comedy. Now, remember this as I read this article, because this person's beef is with whether or not leftists are compatible with comedy, which was uh, something they pulled out of like a Fox article. Earlier in May, stand-up comedian Chrissy Mayer upset her audience members after making jokes about Dylan Mulvaney as a transgender person. Mulvaney has been the subject of much ridicule. Most recently, Bud Light drinkers spewed hate. First of all, is anyone a Bud Light drinker? No one's a Bud Light drinker. I think you you drink Bud Light because it's there and it's cold and it's cheap. Uh, But anyway, the Bud Light drinkers spewed hate after Mulvaney posted a video holding a can of beer with, with her face on it on May 7th. Uh, by the way, it was May 6th. Okay. Let's fact check you right there. What's your name? Nick Harper. Okay. And you, it was only, May- you only upset like four people. It was May 6th. Yeah. It was not May 6th. It was a four. It was four land whales. Okay. Yeah. They took up the space of eight people, but there was only four of them on May 7th. Listeners interrupted listeners first of all you're calling them listeners this is how i know this person has doesn't go to comedy doesn't like comedy doesn't appreciate comedy you're calling them listeners nice. interrupted mayor's performance at the hyenas comedy club in defense of mulvaney mayor later posted the clip on twitter and it has since gone viral thank you very much in the clip mayor misgenders mulvaney and bashes her for not having gender affirming surgery why has it been a year of girlhood and still no tits that's day one okay mayor said referencing mulvaney's series 365 days of girlhood she then poses the question why no tits for dylan to which an audience member responds because he's a man mayor repeats the audience member's comment in agreement a quote delicate audience member then yells no she's a woman Following that outburst, Mayor defends her joke by saying, uh-oh, we have one of those. How is that me defending the joke? That's me just acknowledging what's happening in the room. Uh-oh, we have one of those. It's all good. We can have different beliefs, okay? This is what I hate about it. She cuts out the funny part of the bit. I said, some of us can be believe in reality and some of us can't, which was the fucking joke. But she, yeah. just, she just does an ellipse. Is this what this is called, an ellipse, when it's three dots? Yeah. A group of women is then uh, women. She should put a women in quotes. A group of women is then seen leaving the venue. One of them shouting F you transphobe. Mayor claps back with is that the best you can do? She then proceeds to make jokes about the weight of the women who left, telling them to look out for poachers who are quote going to want their tusks. <laughs> she then, she later revealed that the group of women knocked over her merchandise table on their way out. And then well, she's the misgendering them. How does she know that they're women? Are they identifying? How, exactly. How does she know what they identify as? And and like they, they said to the management, they said someone in their group was uh, marginalized. So what? Yeah. who knows what that means? Mayor's defense. During a subsequent interview with Fox News, Mayor defended her offensive comedy by declaring that true equality is being able to joke about everybody. She stated that no group should be safe from being made fun of and slammed the transgender community for acting like the protected class du jour. Further, Mayor expressed her belief that comedy clubs should be a place where controversial opinions and uncomfortable truths can be said. In light of this, she commented, you should be laughing at things at a comedy club that might get you in trouble at work. You should be making side comments to your buddies at a comedy club that could get you trouble in trouble at work. It's one of the last few places of freedom where you can be yourself and let loose. Like, yeah. let's not pretend that people are not doing these things, that people don't laugh at things that are inappropriate, that people don't make inappropriate comments. Like, let's not pretend. And even the woke leftists are doing this. They're making snide comments about straight white men. Yeah. The only joke a comedian should stop doing is one that doesn't get a laugh. Just because society pretends to be more woke and evolved doesn't mean people don't still laugh at the same things we did 20, 30, 40 years ago. Mayor went on to bash leftists for wanting certain groups exempted from ridicule. Exempt from ridicule? 
Uh, Beyond Mayor, comedians like Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais have been called out for making jokes deemed offensive. And they too complain that comedy is too politically correct because audiences are too sensitive. They claim they are being silenced when consumers point out and condemn certain jokes. I don't think I've ever said I'm being silenced, but... I guess they can say whatever they want. However, this is not the case. By saying these offensive jokes to such a large and public audience, the comedians normalize bigotry. Chrissy Mayer argues that there's no such thing as punching down, but in comedy, the distinction between punching up or down is an important one. This is the paragraph where I really start to like uh, have an issue. Um, okay. Comedians punch up when they make fun of groups or people that hold more social power than them. Oppositely, they punch down when joking about marginalized people, those with little power. Okay. First of all, uh, this is their wording and their logic. Okay. Yeah. I don't, first of all, a true comedian, I don't think really some leftist comedians do believe in this punching up, punching down bullshit, but I mean, if we're being real, I would say that the trans community has more social power than me, a straight, white, you know, soon to be married uh, Christian person. I would say that the trans people are up here and straight folks that are white are, are much down here. So if anything, I am punching up because in 2023, you can't be critical of trans people. You can't criticize them it that's the overall dialogue that you can't joke about them you have to be like Shh, oh my god it's, it's a trans person oh my god be careful you know yeah if i were going to subscribe to this punching up punching down bullshit so trans people technically would be punching up which in their opinion is what you should do is punch up you punch up at the people that are in power which which are the trans ideologues and the activists uh, but I don't believe in that bullshit. I believe uh, everyone is equal. Everyone has equal potential to do to make something of with their life. Um, I think your your attitude is so important, and you can you can make yourself miserable or you can make yourself happy. And I mean, so this is like where I have a problem. I don't believe that making fun of a trans person is is punching down like that this person i feel like is showing their bigotry because it seems like they believe trans people are lower than she is she yes she seems like a straight i mean okay it should surprise nobody that the author of this article is a land whale uh nick harper hi i'm nick she they which means uh you're probably just straight and you're and you're trying to well they the they part is what makes her very interesting and cool. I am a second year English lit major. So this is a sophomore oh, in college. This is a oh, nineteen okay. year old person telling me, someone who's been doing comedy for thirteen years, what I should be doing. Wow! In, in my job that I am professional, and finally full time at doing. This is a nineteen year old cat owning pronoun using land whale at the university of san francisco uh she enjoys writing about queer topics social issues and fashion you know it's so funny i don't see comedy on the list of things that you're equipped to write about nick yeah Yet here you are telling me how to do my job interesting let's go back so this punching up punching down thing is bullshit uh, this is what leftists do to justify treating certain groups uh, as a protected class. And it's it's a bullying tactic, I think. I mean, if I were trans, I would want to be treated just like everybody else. If I were going to go to a comedy club, I wouldn't want to be ignored. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that. If I'm sitting in the front well, I, and I'm like, the, the comedian's making fun of everybody, but then ignores me. I don't know. What's that about? So punching up allows comedians to challenge the status quo and hold those in power accountable. Who the fuck is going to hold anybody in power account? Are you kidding me? Do you think Klaus Schwab is going to go to hyenas in Dallas and be sitting <laughs> in front row waiting for me to stick it to him? Do you think Bill Gates is going to is going to be in the crowd at, at flap flaps in Canada and be like, oh, man, <laughs> They really stuck it to me. Do you think uh, 
<laughs> Jeff Bezos or fucking uh, Joe Biden? Are any of these people going to comedy? No, it's like the elites are the elites. They're kind of untouchable to most of, most of us normies. We're just trying to make our fellow man, our fellow plebe uh, laugh. It's this lofty leftist language. Like, like we can actually, I don't know. Like, I'm not so arrogant that I think I can change. Uh, I can hold power accountable. Like, let's, let's be real here. Uh, punching down only reinforces stereotypes and furthers prejudice against marginalized groups. First of all, like a comedy show is not going to make or break somebody's stereotypes. It's not going to, you're not going to walk into a comedy show 0% racist and then walk out 50% racist. That's not how that works. Yeah. No, this is, this is insane. And this person has clearly never been to a comedy club no. or been around Pe real people is mm -hmm. that's another thing too is like they're on the internet they don't understand like you can write all this stuff on the internet but this is not how a conversation would go down in real life a 19 year old is telling me someone who looks 25 but is much older than 25 how to do my job that I get paid to do. Uh, I'm, you know, I have hot takes. I'm not in every major club, but it's like, I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. I'm paying my bills. And who knows if this fucking clown is even paying her own rent at this point. Like you're not an adult yet. You're not in a position to tell uh, other adults what to do, but leftism. Uh, okay, and then they have this tweet here from Omni Vag Alor. I work with preteens. We had an entire conversation about quote comedy yesterday. Anytime someone puts comedy in quotes, I just you, you know you can completely disregard what's about to follow. Being able to identify whether a joke is punching up or punching down is crucial in all caps. And intent doesn't matter when you aren't from the minority group whose experiences you're talking about. First of all, this is not a person who's fun. This is not a person who's going to go to a comedy club. This is not a person who is, uh, oh, yeah. But another part of it, too, Chrissy, is like, it's like when you aren't from the minority group, well, when the Little Women LA ladies were upset with me for saying midget, I was part of the minority group, and I'm still not allowed to say it. So it's like, when does it stop? Wow. So when somebody like Ty Rivera goes on stage and makes fun of the LGBTQ community, is he not allowed to say it, even though he's part of the community? Because it, it, I just right. feel like everybody, <laughs> stand-up is supposed to be, we are supposed to be making fun of those things. And especially like, it's even funnier when you are part of the community, you should be allowed to do it even more so. So to uh, sit here and say that, oh, comedy, it's like they're, they're trying to dictate what people can right. say. And They're always moving the goal. That the example of Ty Rivera is perfect because he is a gay man who makes fun of the gay community. And the I think the reason why, like that joke that I told about Dylan that night, and it was really more of a riff, but the reason why it resonated with the audience, because it wasn't just me like pounding on Dylan. I was going, I was thinking like what it would be like if I was trans, if I really wanted to be a dude, what would I want? Well, I would want a big fat cock. That's what I would want because yeah. that's what masculinity <laughs> is to me. That's would be like, that's, that's the trophy. I would be like, I'm going to probably start lifting a lot of heavy weights because I got to make up for the fact that I'm five, three. Okay. So, which means I need a big cock and I need big muscles. I'm just thinking what I would do. So really it's a joke about me, how I would be trans. So you're telling me how I can be trans? That doesn't sound very inclusive. Exactly. Uh, but like, first of all, don't, what's the point of, you're talking to preteens about comedy? Why? What 12, 13 year old, they're not in comedy clubs. They haven't lived enough life to have a broad, like sense of humor comes when you're an adult, you've had jobs, you've lived, you've lived, <laughs> you've done things. Like there are the occasional, there are occasionally kids who are funny, 
Like Frank's kid is freaking hilarious and very smart and wise beyond his years because as he's mm. he's been around the two of us. Um and of course Polly Shore, you know, grew up in the comedy club. Um but it shouldn't be something you could be you should be speaking to a group of preteens about. That's like speaking to a group of preteens about car maintenance. It's just not relevant to their life, really. Yeah. But this, this is probably a conversation like, oh, you're not supposed to bully. You're not supposed to make comments about your, uh, you know, your classmates' appearance. But that's not comedy. I would consider that to be just like bullshitting with your friends. Yeah, it's like they're they're at the point where they're policing comedy, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. And like I said, like you said, these people have never she's never even been to a comedy club, never been no. to a, been to a show. You cannot compare what happens at a live comedy club at a sh live show to Twitter, and that's where these moron uh, internet uh, like journalists or whatever you want to call them that's where they go wrong because they're not the same just because you don't like somebody's tweets <laughs> that's not i wouldn't even consider that quote comedy i don't know when comedians make misogynistic or transphobic jokes they normalize such behavior and thinking i don't agree with this i don't think i'm normalizing anything i think this is when you say normalizing is a very leftist word it's very controlling i i don't think that I'm so powerful important that I can control people or normalize anything. Yeah. Wow. For example, jokes referring to trans women as men, such as in Mayer's routine, invalidate transgender identities through humor. Okay, if you're so fragile that a joke can invalidate your identity, then guess what? You are not compatible with comedy. You shouldn't be at a comedy show, which was my whole point. If you're so weak that you can't withstand someone's comedy set, then you shouldn't be at a club. Then you should stay home. You should be in therapy. You should work on well, your insecurities. And biology invalidates their identity. So I don't. <laughs> yeah. Reality yeah. invalidates your identity. And these people can't come to grips with reality. And that's what that's what <laughs> a stand up comedy club is. It's everyone coming together on what is reality and what's not, because you know what, when it's not reality and it's not true or it's not clicking, then people don't laugh. But if oh. it's clear and it's true and it's funny, then people are going to laugh. This next sentence pisses me off. Go ahead. Read. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, transgender comedians like Robin Tran, have you heard of Robin Tran? Yeah. Okay, I haven't. Uh, making jokes about their own experiences can make people laugh without tokenizing themselves. That's BS. Robin Tran. Who is Robin Tran? Let me see if I can pull them up. Yeah. Let's see. Robin Tran on Instagram. So this is the model. This is who we should be like. Yes. Pull it up. This is a trans person that is a com comedian model. I have their Instagram. I'm going to stop this for a second and pull up who our idol is. This is who we should all be like. Is Robin Tran here? Um, okay, go back. Oh, she has a Netflix special, uh, which means she's lo in lockstep with the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Uh, okay, let's see. Is this a, a link? Is this um, a video? The and the oh shit! Are, um, critiquing the writing uh, abilities of the <laughs> This is the like. Uh, writing, writing quality. I'm like, well, yeah, you write for Valen, don't you? you know? <laughs> Ew! Hold on. This is a person who's balding but still has long hair. This is yeah. who we should be like. Um. Okay. I didn't really hear a joke there. But maybe just a little bit of a riff. Okay. Uh, Robin Tran looks like a very niche comedian. This is like a, you're a trans comedian. So this is how everyone should be. Okay. They were on the roast of Whitney Cummings. That's good. You know, maybe they're, maybe they are funny. Lewis I just is know Puerto nothing. Rican. Uh, Whitney, when you said this roast would have terrible PR, I don't know that this is what you meant. Funny. And that joke had nothing to do uh, with him being trans. Yeah. I would, I would, I don't know. I find it very hard to believe that Robin Tran has no jokes 
no self-deprecating um, jokes. But anyway, that's who we should be more like, Lila. Um, okay, making jokes about that. That's one. a real woman. That's a real woman. We all need to be. <laughs> My voice isn't deep enough to be like that real woman. Uh, there's <laughs> this last paragraph is great. There is no right way to do comedy. Then why are you writing this fucking article? Are you freaking okay? Wow. Why are we here? There is no right way to do comedy, but there can and should be a distinction between lighthearted jokes and offensive humor. Why does anyone need uh, that distinction to be made for them? People can tell. I mean, and that's also completely subject subjective. What is lighthearted for someone might be offensive to somebody else. So who, why does that need to be someone's job to dis make that distinction? That's like saying, oh, we need to decide what tastes people should have. We need, to, we need to pick and choose what people can laugh at. What's okay to laugh at. Again, this is all very controlling. Comedians, like, people are not retarded. They laugh at what they find funny. They don't need you to tell, like, they don't need uh, a 19-year-old uh, English lit major with cats in San Francisco to tell them what's okay to laugh at. Comedians should not rely on outdated stereotypes to get a laugh. Are you fucking kidding me? If we didn't rely on stereotypes, uh, there'd be zero jokes. Uh, I think th I would say there'd be 50% less jokes. Even at this point, there's a stereotype of a, of a straight white male. That's a stereotype now. I would consider that to be an outdated stereotype. Yeah, I, I just think that <sighs> it's just so insane to me that there's no right way to do comedy except my way and how it should be and uh, offensive humor. And it's like, I, I feel like offensive humor it is actually funnier because you're actually trying to pu push the line and like, see what happens. And here's another thing that's so different about stand up now is like, if I go to an open mic, right, and I'm trying out new material, someone could videotape me, post it on the internet. And then before the bits even like, fully worked out, you know, it's like, we're not even right. allowed to try things. And you can't, be, you can't have that messy creative process, because somebody could put out your first draft. And then you get I mean, whatever. At this point, you and I are kind of uncancelable because we've leaned into it. But like somebody younger starting out, you get canceled for a, a first draft of a joke. And then you're like, oh, shit. But then again, you wouldn't be doing comedy because that's now part of the deal. So if that's going to dissuade you from pursuing stand up, then you're not cut out for it. You're and I'm sorry if you're a weak person, like you can't do stand up. You're it's a, comedy is stand up. Comedy is not for the weak. It's right. not. And so you can, you can try to like use all this like fluff and, you know, oh, you have to be like, you can try to push these woke comedians, but I'm sorry. It's just like, it doesn't work. And in real life, people can see th through that. And it's not what's going to make people laugh. It's just not, it's not the same. The yeah. It's not the same as real life. Right. And these people are, don't seem to be out in real life because you're a 19 year old cat owner. In college, you haven't been out. I already know you haven't been out in the real world. This is so perfect. Because would the author of this article go up to a black comedian and call them out for using white people be like stereotypes, which is I would consider a very outdated stereotype. But guess what? I would never, ever tell someone not to do jokes like that because lots of people love those jokes. Yeah, and you see that happen all the time. Oh, there's white people in the audience and that's okay to make fun of. You know, it's just... yeah. It's very interesting how we're not allowed to make fun of certain things, but I am like when when I was on that show, Little Women, and they like got mad at me for saying the M word midget. It actually made me want to do it more. It like didn't make me want to not do it. I was like, you, and I'm glad I didn't apologize because I feel like it kind of like was a was a taste of what was to come. Reading this article makes me want to go harder. That is the yeah. end result of this is like, man, I could be going so much harder. And you should. Comedians should not rely on outdated stereotypes to get a laugh. They should instead challenge and criticize those stereotypes. What would that look like? Does that sound funny to you? Challenging and criticizing a stereotype? But that, but, okay, that doesn't even make any sense because I feel like that is what you're doing is you're challenging stereotypes and criticizing the transgender movement you are challenging it and you are criticizing it so you're actually doing 
what they want you to do. So it doesn't even make any sense. Right. But I'm not pointing it at who they want me to point it at. Yes. And guess what? Idiot. Stereotypes exist because they're true. Okay. If Asian people were great drivers, it wouldn't be a thing. If women were great drivers, it wouldn't be a thing. If men had no problem with asking for directions, that wouldn't be a thing. If black people uh, didn't get into fights in, at airports, it wouldn't be a thing. Like, we're not pulling <laughs> these things out of nowhere. If black people didn't disrupt the movies, it wouldn't be a thing. You'd say it and be like, what? Huh? That doesn't happen often enough for it to be a part of the collective... <laughs> conscious i'm just gonna list all the stereotypes uh <laughs> they should instead uh comedy is about making people laugh not furthering discrimination what a fucking retard this person is well i feel like okay comedy yeah comedy is about people making people laugh and that's the whole point is you're not furthering the discrimination because you are talking about it and you're pointing it out. And when you can laugh about it, it's like for me, like that's why I started stand up. So I could talk about my disability and I could point it out and I could talk about it. So when I got off stage, it wasn't like people were thinking about that anymore. They could see me and they could right. respect me. So it's like, it's insane for this person who's never gone on stage, never tried to do stand up. It's like, okay, why don't you do your type of stand up that you think is so much better? Than this offensive comedy. Why don't you go on stage and do your lighthearted jokes and yeah. see how the fuck that works? Let's how see you that? do an hour of cat jokes and see how well that does. Yeah. And it's it's particularly important for you, Lila, because I'm sure you experience like I don't know if you have some sets where you don't bring up your you know your disability at all, but you probably feel like you you know if it's if it's a crowd of people who already know you like our shows we were doing together maybe you feel less like it has to be the first, but I'm sure if it's a brand new, you know, like that big show you did um, during the pandemic at that big theater. Yeah. I'm the sure you felt theater. like you had to right I away. Have to. I yeah. have to, Chrissy, because you have to understand when I come on stage and it's a group of people who've never seen me before, I am not what the average person looks like. And if I don't address it, the, the people aren't even thinking about my jokes. They're like, what the fuck is going on here? Why does she look like that? You know what I'm saying? And I feel like even um, at my uh, my show with Alex Stein, I feel like I should have went a little bit harder on my disability and like address that a little bit more because I thought I could just like go into some stuff. And then when I, I didn't get into my disability stuff to like seven minutes in oh. and then they're like, oh, okay, we understand what's going on here. I thought I, I went up there and I started talking about squirrels. I'm like, we don't want to know about fucking squirrels. We want to know why you walk like that. You know, right. like, I have and to that's the thing too. Like, I feel like I don't go into my regular jokes when I'm in a new city or it's a new show or you're excited because you feel like I have to make comments about what's going on in the room or the people that are there. Like, you want to make these fresh observations that are not in your normal set because you just want to like, like say them first and then you get into your material. So you might have been in that headspace of like, oh, I have these new observations. I just want to yeah. get out. But it's, it's like, even, even now I'm starting to realize, like, I, you know, I like, I've lived with my disability for so long, for my whole life that like, I don't even think about it, but I have to, like, my husband will explain to me, he's like, no, like when people see you for the first time, they're, they can't even pay attention to what you're saying because mm -hmm. they're like thinking about why does she look like this? Why is she so small? What's going on here? And he's like, you're actually doing yourself a disservice by not going into it and going into it even more, you know, like I, I feel like remember me and you were talking and it's like, you didn't even know that I've had so many surgeries, you know, it's like, Oh, maybe that's something mm -hmm. I should explore a little bit more and kind of <gasps> let people understand yeah. about. And there's something really funny that that can be linked in with like the trans conversation because they have a lot of surgeries and like, you can definitely like, that's when, when someone learns you've had so many surgeries, it makes it go, Oh shit. She's been through a lot because you're so tough and you don't have a victim mentality. But when you bring that up, like, Oh yeah, big deal. I've had 17 surgeries or something. It's, it's this great play on a very making light of a serious thing. You're taking yeah, look your at We're yeah. making lighthearted jokes. <laughs> light <-hearted> jokes. <laughs> and like Eric is right because if someone doesn't know you at all, uh, like, I think our fans, like, they know you, they know your face, but they, they see you in person for the first time. They don't realize that you're, like, yeah. shorter. I, and, um, yeah, I, when we were at the FNT meetup, too, I had a lot of people come up to me and be like, oh, my God, I didn't even realize how tiny you were. 
you know? And so it's like, because here in the little box, you would think I'm five seven. Yeah. <laughs> you seem very tall online. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I even had after shows, people come up to me after the show and they're like, oh my God, you look bigger on stage. And I'm like, well, I'm glad, <laughs> <that it's laughs> to. but it's, you know, so I just think it's, it's, I wouldn't want to be limited on what jokes I, I could and couldn't do, but I will say this. I have like, um, th like if there's somebody in a wheelchair, like in my audience, in the audience, you know, sometimes I'll think like, oh, how can I maybe like incorporate them to like make them really feel included or like not because you know, I have a bit where I talk about like, you know, thank God I can walk. But then sometimes if there's somebody in a wheelchair, I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to I like, I'll even guess myself, like, do I want to say that because I do care about what people, you know, I want to make the audience feel good. So like I had one of my girlfriends came to my show once and she was in a wheelchair and I pointed her out and I was like, she's the most VIP person in here. She came with her own seat. <laughs> <laughs> I know well, what you mean, because it's not like, I'm sure there's people who have never met me. They think I'm like this cold hearted transphobic bitch. And like, <laughs> I even, uh, uh, I, I do watch what I say. Like I, I, and I don't mean that like I censor myself. I look at the audience and you try to tailor it for who's there. Like if I see a yeah. freaking and I hate when this happens, like a, if there's like a 16 year old kid or 15 year old kid. You're like, uh, wow. Okay. Uh, I guess we're turning you into a man today. Like, I don't, I don't know. Like I, I go, am I going to tell my waxing bit? Am I going to not say certain words? Like, yeah. but then again, if your parents have brought you to a comedy show, then you're, then you're probably, you know, it, I, I do quickly like reassess what I'm about to say. Cause I'm like, I, I don't want to traumatize this kid or like, send the parents home when they have to have a, a tough conversation or something like but then I'm like what is the most scandalous thing I talk about in my set I don't know I curse a little bit um I make you know I talk, I don't know it's weird M maybe I'm at the point where I wouldn't change anything at all it's because it's been a while since I've had like a teenager in the crowd but you don't like to see it but it, there's and same thing like if I um if I do jokes about like interracial dating, I'll like find a couple and I'll, and I'll really try to, you know, like make it specific to who is in that crowd, not to piss anybody off, but to make them kind of feel special. Yeah. And it's, and I think that's like the, the more we do stand up and as we get deeper into our careers, it's like you get more experience. And that's like, I, um, I saw Andrew Dice Clay perform last week at the house of Plain comedy house of Plano. And I was sitting right up in front and there was a couple next to us and the first 15 minutes of a set, which is all about this couple and just like kept going on and on about them. Oh, that's great. It was, it was really cool to watch, but it's also like, he's had so many years of experience that he can really like riff with the crowd. And I've been very like attracted to that lately, just kind of like watching how a comedian, like I said, you're so good at that, like goes in and out of their sets and connects. And I feel like I'm just getting to that point in my career where it's like, I'm evolving and kind of like learning how to do that. But if we are constantly being told what we can't say, what we can't do, um, what we can't try, it's like, you're, you're not going to know until you're up there on the stage. So it's really funny to me that these people who criticize comedy would never have the balls to go on stage with a microphone in front of an audience. And it's not the same as YouTube. It's not the same as writing an article. It's not the same as sharing a funny tweet. It's so different unless you've done mm -hmm. it. Like I just, I can't totally respect what you have to say about it unless you've actually been on stage and done it yourself. Exactly. And if you're going to compare it to music, I would say like the crowd interactions or a riff or like the Dylan thing was a riff for me. Like you could compare that to like, like a solo or um, like an improvisation. Like there's your songs, there's your set list the songs you know you're gonna play that are on your album or whatever and then there's like oh you do a cover or you do a riff or you do, you like, kind of take a left turn into um like something kind of random that the crowd doesn't unexpect doesn't expect and that's kind of similar in comedy i just fucking musicians don't have to deal with this shit <laughs> it's like no, it's, and it's, I feel like with stand up, it's the most difficult form of public speaking because it's one thing to go to like an event, right? And there's a speaker that's going to give a talk and they just happen to be funny. Oh, that's, they get bonus points. But oh, yeah. Stand -up, 
it's these people have paid money to see you be funny and it's it's every 30 seconds to a minute big laugh and it's like just because you're funny in the beginning it all has to tie in together and it's like it is this it's such a fulfilling art form too because you never know what's going to happen and when you get that laugh god doesn't it just feel so good it's, it's like so surfing it's like the setup is like you're paddling 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 and then you can like ride the wave a little bit when there's a laugh but it's like you got to do it again and do it again and like for however long your set is love you guys thank you for the chats thank you for the comments i will see you guys tomorrow bye bye all right love you guys oh, i don't even want to leave this candle smells so good i don't want to leave all right love you guys talk to you soon bye love you all join the discord feet love you all wow you guys are awesome don't even get it. bye guys bye now i'm really leaving love you bye